Who are you? You look vaguely familiar. Did you spot a special appearance in Cruella? Because we did. Disney loves sneaking references about character inspirations and other Disney movies into their live-action remakes. Whether it's a nod to a famous deleted scene, popular Disney landmarks, or fashion moments inspired by the original, here are some of the best details you might have missed. You notice how some dog owners look a lot like their dogs. When Horace and Jasper mention how some owners look like their dogs in Cruella, we're treated to two characters who look almost exactly like they did in the animated movie. I've never noticed that. The long, flowing fur and beret are a clear reference to this scene from 101 Dalmatians, when Pongo is watching out the window to see if he can find himself and Roger, some suitable mates. You might have noticed that the outfits the partygoers are wearing at the end of Cruella to honor the fallen fashion designer aren't really that similar to Emma Stone's Cruella style. That's because they're actually a nod to another interpretation of the Disney villain. Glenn Close's version of the character had the same hair and fashion sense in the 1996 live action 101 Dalmatians. It is rather amusing, isn't it? The woman who inspired Cruella DeVille's laugh and mannerisms actually makes an appearance in Cruella. While Estella is pretending to be a hotel maid, she's watching the 1944 Alfred Hitchcock film Lifeboat, starring Tallulah Bankhead. Bankhead was the original reference for the fashion-forward villain in the 1961 animated film, and you can't deny the similarities between the characters' iconic laughs. <laughs> You might notice a nod in Maleficent, Mistress of Evil, to Aurora and Philip's dance from Sleeping Beauty, when Aurora gets spun around after he proposes. But this scene also gives the couple their very own Little Mermaid moment. There is no magic nor curse that could ever tear me away from you, Aurora. Aurora gets engaged, surrounded by creatures from the moors, under a weeping willow type tree. This is pretty similar to Kiss the Girl from The Little Mermaid, where Ariel's friends come together to serenade her and Prince Eric. It also teases The Little Mermaid live-action movie. Take a very close look at the music box Maurice is working on in Beauty and the Beast. It's a miniature of where he and Belle's mom used to live in Paris. But even more subtle, this scene also represents a deleted scene and character from the animated movie. A deleted story reel from the animation showed Belle receiving a music box from her father as a gift on her 17th birthday. A later version of the film even included a mute music box character, who you can spot very briefly during the castle battle in the animation. Did you spot the original Mulan making an appearance in the live action remake? This is Ming-Na Wen, the voice of the animated Mulan. She makes a quick cameo to present us with the new heroine near the end of the film, symbolizing her passing the torch over to the next version of the character. Your Imperial Highness, Hua Mulan. Regent's Park is where Anita and Roger first meet in 101 Dalmatians. Here, yeah. take mine. Well, according to Cruella, the Disney villain has a connection to the very same park. She's particularly attached to the fountain, as that's where she first meets Horace and Jasper, and then she goes back regularly to speak with her late mother. Everything's going so well, Mom. Beauty and the Beast must have really loved their music box moments, because one of Maurice's other music boxes features the inspiration for a Disney palace. Can you spot the mini Taj Mahal sitting on top of a brightly colored elephant? The Taj Mahal was the original inspiration for the Sultan's Palace in Agrabah. It's a pretty fitting detail since the animated Aladdin features a small figurine of the Beast. It's almost like the creators of the two films were having their own secret conversation with each other through references. The outfit Estella's mom wears when she takes her to Hellman Hall might look familiar to some of you. It's pretty similar to what Anita wears when she first meets Roger in the animation. She also has the same hair color and style, paying homage to the original animated character. Wear it. It looks good. When Aladdin and Genie are talking about the terms of making wishes and turning into a prince, the magic carpet is having some fun of his own in the background. If you look closely, you'll notice he's actually building the iconic Disney Castle logo in the sand. He even throws some sand over it to mimic Tinkerbell flying by. Some of Aladdin's unique animation managed to make its way into the live-action remake. When Genie is explaining wishes to Aladdin, he pulls out a scroll featuring familiar animated versions of Genie, Sultan, and Aladdin. It's a perfect reference to the classic animation style and a quick homage to Robin Williams' amazing version of the character. Why well, feel sheepish? 
Maleficent doesn't turn into a dragon in the live action films, but Disney made sure to at least reference the witch's unforgettable transformation. Now shall you deal with me, O oh prince. In this scene, her costume looks like it has scales and even takes on a greenish hue. A nod to the dragon's epic wings and green fire from Sleeping Beauty. Aurora is seen wearing a pink dress to her wedding, and you definitely didn't miss it changing to blue and back again. Similar to this scene and the fairies' disagreement over which color the princess should wear. Make it blue, make it pink. But there's a subtle thing about one of her other dresses that you might have missed. This pink dress that she wears to the dinner party features the iconic Sleeping Beauty collar, which was actually Elle Fanning's idea. Mulan's clothes in the live-action film are often shades of blue and red to pay homage to the animated character's style, but did you notice the Mushu-inspired outfit? In this scene, Mulan is a troublesome child wearing lots of red and gold. The colors represent the dragon's colors in the animation. Plus, the gold ribbons in her hair and the way it's styled kind of remind us of Mushu's whiskers. <laughs> Pretty high, huh? When Prince Ali is trying to figure out what kingdom he actually rules, Genie's got his back by conjuring a map of made-up places. If you look closely, you'll notice that the map includes famous Disney landmarks like Fantasyland, Adventureland, Tomorrowland, and either Cinderella or Sleeping Beauty's castle. Have you lost your country? No, no. Cinderella brought more than one princess's famous ball gown to life in the live-action remake. In the background of the ball, you'll see lots of brightly colored dresses inspired by various Disney princesses. There's a bright yellow dress for Belle, a green gown for Tiana, a purple dress for Rapunzel, and shades of blue that remind us of Jasmine. What other Disney princess dresses do you spot in this scene? Believe me, they're all looking at you. When Belle and the Beast head to Paris, there's a landmark in the distance that's notable from being the focus of another Disney movie. Can you spot it? What would you like to see first? Yep, that's Notre Dame, a Parisian structure that just had to be included as a shout out to 1996's The Hunchback of Notre Dame. There appears to be a small painting hanging in the background of this scene in Cinderella that resembles another Disney princess. With a red and blue dress, raven black hair, and what appears to be an animal companion, it seems to be a quick shout out to Snow White, whose 1937 debut makes her the first official Disney princess. I'm so ashamed of the fuss I've made. If you look closely at the Mad Hatter's outfits throughout the Alice in Wonderland movies, you'll notice his clothes are patchwork and look homemade. Costume designer Colleen Atwood took her inspiration for his look from a magpie. They're known to collect random things they find interesting and use them in their nests, suggesting this is the exact same way the Hatter creates his wacky wardrobe. Naughty. Did you notice the unique shape of Genie's boat at the end of Aladdin? It looks an awful lot like the lamp he used to be imprisoned in. Now, instead of being in his own personal jail cell, the lamp-shaped boat represents his freedom and independence. Ah, I see what you're doing. You hook me. The live-action Mulan isn't a musical, but that didn't stop some musical moments from being snuck into the new film. The scene where Mulan's learning to fight has reflection playing in the background and includes a lot of visual callbacks to the animation, like magnolia trees and Mulan seeing her reflection in a pool of water. Another reference is made to I'll Make a Man Out of You when Commander Tung repeats a line inspired by the song. Tranquil with the forest, but on fire within. In The Lion King, Timon and Pumbaa break out into an unforgettable cover of the Tokens version of The Lion Sleeps Tonight. A few lines in, Pumbaa wanders off into the trees and Timon calls out, I can't hear you, buddy! Back me up! Well, in the live-action remake, he finally gets the backup he's been waiting for as other animals slowly join in and harmonize, turning his solo into a captivating ensemble. Close this enormous girl! The blue dress that Alice wears early on in Tim Burton's reimagining of Alice in Wonderland is one of the only fashion moments that echoes the animated film. It was modeled after Alice's dress from the animation, and once she changes into something different, it signifies that this film is going to be an entirely different take on the Alice in Wonderland that came before. To remake The Jungle Book, director Jon Favreau didn't just find a similar-looking storybook to start the tale. He actually got Disney to go into their archives and dig up the original leather-bound book from the 1967 animation. Disney loves starting their stories off with real storybooks, so Favreau wanted to continue this trend with the exact same beginning as the original. It definitely fooled us because we thought it was just a convincing recreation. 
Do you notice something different about Casey Jr. in the animated Dumbo versus the live action remake? It's more than just the colors. The train also has a 41 on the front. This is meant to pay homage to the original movie, which came out in 1941. All aboard! Disney has been known to throw some hidden Mickey Mouse designs into the background of their movies. Can you see them in this scene from Aladdin? How about this scene from Cinderella? Let us know if you spotted them in the comments down below.